so hey y'all, I'm Andy. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see y'all. Thanks, thanks for having me here. If you look up in front of, of this bus uh, on the front left-hand side, we'll see the, the small letters ES6. And indeed, uh, the ES6 circus is coming to town. And we've got some ES Discuss clown shoes conversations. We've got the C++ knife juggling uh, folks. And we've also got some JavaScript acrobats in the show as well. How, how many of y'all knew that um, parts of all of, at least of the open source JavaScript implementations are implemented in JavaScript? How many of you knew that? Just a good, good part, maybe, maybe not all. And, and, and actually, we're going to be focusing on, on, on that part. Uh, the, the things, the, the parts of uh, the JavaScript implementations which are implemented in JavaScript. Relatively unstudied thing. Um, kind of interesting path for folks like y'all to get a bit more involved in the engines. And so I, I'm working mostly on V8 these days. So I've worked on SpiderMonkey in the past and, and in a more distant past on, on JavaScript core. And so we're going to actually go through all three of these engines and see how can we add uh, features from upcoming specifications to these engines. Uh, but first, I think we have to talk a little bit about you know, why you would want to do such a thing. right? It seems a little bit odd for, to be implementing features in JavaScript for JavaScript. I mean, like, what are you, you've got to build on something, right? It's like Russian dolls all the way down. Uh, but actually, it's really attractive like, to uh, write features in JavaScript, even for implementers. And this might not be an obvious point. So I wanted to you know, bust out one thing, for example, which is that JavaScript is faster than C++. And I say that as a guy who slings C++ all day long. right? And the reason is um, that JavaScript can do things that C++ just doesn't have available to it. You know, you, you guys can take advantage um, of tricks uh, that the JavaScript implementation uh, does for you that are not available at runtime in a C++ program. Uh, specifically, um, dynamic inlining, so like uh, for each as an interface, is not something that you're going to see in C++. Well, I mean, you might see it in a header file where it gets kind of inlined into each of the implementations, but as a, as a generic facility, it's not, it's not how they work, right? And, and the reason why it can work in JavaScript is because the, the function that you're for eaching on, the function that you're mapping on, uh, gets inlined directly, or can get if it's uh, important enough, into the sites where it's used. Uh, so this is a trick that's available in JavaScript, not available in C++. Um, and the same like, inline appears here all the time. And, and that's really like the big thing that's, that's happening in JavaScript. We can inline allocations, meaning just when you allocate an object, it's merely incrementing a pointer and nothing else. And C++ uh, can't really do this for, for uh, garbage collected objects like we have in JavaScript. And you can inline, uh, like when you access foo.bar, that that bar property would be on slot one of the object. That can also get dynamically inlined. You know, typical performance stuff. And this isn't a perf talk, so uh, I'll move on after that. Um, I would mention also that if you're implementing features to be accessible to JavaScript developers, uh, that implementing them in JavaScript is advantageous because you don't pay the cost of going from JavaScript to C++ and potentially back, especially in functions like for each and, and, and map and such. Um, and indeed, when the, uh, when the first instance of JavaScript in JavaScript core, JavaScript core being uh, the JavaScript implementation of WebKit, meaning Safari and iOS and such. Oliver Hunt, who's a TC39 <laughs> member from Apple and hacker on JavaScript core, said that this gained them a, a neat 65% uh, performance improvement on uh, array prototype every, you know, just by moving uh, this facility from C++ to JavaScript, which is pretty rad. Um, and then there, there, there's another um, symmetry that we can exploit, uh, which is that by writing something in JavaScript, uh, we uh, can more easily produce the, the desired behavior, right? Because in something as terse and as lovely, I think, as the new ES6 iteration for var x of y, z of x, or z of x, I, I should say, as an American, uh, that actually there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? You, you have to get 
Y is actually an iterable here, and you have to get the iterator from it, and you have to call next on it all these times, and you have to set up a context in which an exception is thrown, you have to close down the iterator and test the done thing every time, and what about proxies, and what about getters, and I mean, it's just a big old mess. It, and if I write it in JavaScript, it's, it's short, sweet, to the point, and it does the right thing. So it, it's an advantageous thing from, from, an from an implementation perspective. And on the other side, uh, we avoid a lot of security bugs by writing something in JavaScript. Some things are just are impossible, right? The sort of um, knife-throwing injuries our, our C++ fellow circus members might be prone to are, are not actually you know, something that, that JavaScripters are, uh, like a, it's a, a lower um, occupational hazard, so to speak. Um, and there are just you know, whole, whole categories of bugs that are, are, are removed by, by doing JavaScript. Um, so, in the end, all implementations that I know of, I don't know anything about Chakra, right? I don't really care, to be honest. It's closed source. I mean, if they want me to care, they'll open source it, and then I'll, you know, start implementing things for them. But, so, uh, for all these reasons, all of the implementations that I know of are uh, writing features in JavaScript. And, and then the rest of this talk is really, you know, how do we do this in these different engines? How do they uh, incorporate JavaScript in their engines? Uh, and, by extension, how might you find people uh, be able to contribute one day some implementation of a missing ES6 feature or an ES next feature and, and, and like that. So the, the first implementation I'm going to talk about is uh, JavaScript core. And JavaScript core has a, has a very simple model in which, um, let's see if I can pull this over, in which simply, um, am I mirroring now? Can I apply? Primary, mirror, apply. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to drag some stuff on the main screen. We'll roll like that. I'll be okay. In which simply you can implement uh, functions in JavaScript. And so, by the amazing technology invested in me, oh dear God, <laughs> by the technology invested in me, I've got Emacs. It's amazing. Whoa, what did I do to it? <laughs> okay, here we go. So, uh, and it rolls like this. Uh, here I have whoa, a full screen Emacs. Now let's just make it a little bit bigger. We have this amazing projector that's actually larger than my laptop, so I can't see it as I type. And if I look uh, in WebKit, you have to check it out from, from Git. Uh, or, or subversion, but I think they're moving to Git at some point. Uh, we have the WebKit directory. You just check it out. There's very standard build instructions for all these things. And in source JavaScript core, we have all of JavaScript core, which is all the thing that's in your iOS. So if you manage to land a patch on this, it will end up in your iPhone at some point. Um, and eventually, uh, we have built-ins, and some of these things have JavaScript files in them. So, like for example, here is the implementation of every, which is inside your browser. And so I want to do the most simple thing which is to add like a function, uh, function foo, return, ahoy, ffconf. Okay, so we have a function. Uh, it's in this file. It's going to be on array prototype. Uh, I have to modify one more thing though, unfortunately. Uh, and I'll show you this amazing technique which I have. Let's see. This is, uh, so I'm a professional JavaScript engine developer, right? And so I use grep to get around my source code files. It's really high technology. So I just search for find index and anything named uh, star.cpp in the JavaScript core directory, and I find there's one instance of it, and it's in this other C file. And so, because I know find index is implemented in JavaScript, I'll just add another foo entry right here. It's basically like monkeys tapping on the keyboard. And this is, this is how, how things happen, right? <laughs> So uh, I've added, no, I'm not going to add anything to the copyright. Thank you very much. Uh, we go over to my source file. Wow, this is amazing. So embarrassing, y'all are seeing all my things. And here, uh, in, you know, all these projects have very weird ways to build them. Uh, JavaScript core has uh, build JSC for building uh, JavaScript core. And I, I'm on Linux, like GNU Linux, excuse me, because I'm a free software person. And so the, the GTK bit. So it'll be built. Uh, we'll have it soon enough. And what we'll have is an augmented JavaScript core that has a foo prototype on the array. So this is like the hardest way to make a polyfill ever. So really, you want to start with a polyfill. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, we'll get to it at some point. You really, you want to start with a polyfill, and then you want to, you know, once you determine, like, this is the right thing, you know, I'm going to submit this project, then you want to go through all the pain of checking it out and building it and all sorts of things, and, and eventually this will come back. So while we're, while we're rolling with that, let's uh, find my uh, example here. Uh, free software, as you know. Hey, here we go. Okay, so in summary, we added a function, and then we added it to this crazy list. And the build system somehow extracts this function, and, and we'll stick it on the prototype object. And we'll come back and see what that looks like a little bit later. The thing is, like, the JavaScript that's in these implementations is weird JavaScript, right? Technical term. And it, it means that it, it has, um, it, it, it runs in a different environment. And it's weird in three different flavors, in the JavaScript core flavor, and in the spider monkey flavor, and in the, the V8 flavor. And the JavaScript core flavor is that each function is compiled on its own, like somehow extracted as a string and then bound to the name, and the first time you call it, it's going to be parsed and, and compiled. And it has some weird uh, like scoping issues. You can't access any globals in it. Weird, right? But you can access initial values of globals, like the initial value of the object property. I don't know, how many of y'all have opened up the, the ES6 spec here? A few of y'all. Yeah, so you know my pain, like, like you read the spec and you see the thing and it says, create an object with the initial value of the object prototype property. And you're like, what, what's going on here, right? And so you're clicking and soon you're lost in a rat's nest of those fragments on that huge, like, I don't know. I don't even know how long that page is. It's, it's, it's enormous. Every time I have to load it. So uh, it's, it's weird JavaScript, but you know, it is JavaScript and, and, and you can do things there. And I, if you're interested, I advise you to check out this uh, address. My uh, presentation software is, of course, written in Scheme because I'm a total nerd. It's duplicating the, uh, the at sign there. So it's only one at sign in that, in that URL. Right? Um, however, if we look back at our, uh, what do we get? JavaScript core is now built. That's awesome. So WebKit build. Um, release bin JSC. Oh man, that's amazing. Now I have a JavaScript core in which I can say um, I got my array and I call foo on it and it says ahoy ffconf. Oh, isn't that so good? <laughs> you folks are really easy. I mean, I, I just made like foo, right? So, okay, next. Move, move on to something a little bit better. Um, okay. Let's try something a little bit more complicated and at the same time a bit more real, uh, Spider Monkey. So Spider Monkey, as you know, the engine inside is a Firefox. Uh, really great engine, I like it a lot. Uh, and it's, it's weird JavaScript is, um, it's a little bit more normal in the sense that uh, the execution model is uh, you have a bunch of files that implement features for, um, in JavaScript for JavaScript core. And they all sort of get executed as if they were in a script tag, basically. And then there's um, other code that sort of uh, accesses properties on that, on that global object, because it's a global object with scope, and binds them to prototype properties and such. So uh, as my example, now we're going to call this thing pipelines. This is ESNX pipelines. And, it, and I'm calling it pipelines because if I put the word comprehensions, it would overflow the sort of left-hand you know, column there. <laughs> And comprehensions is, in fact, the, the old word. I don't know if uh, we had um, the, the old uh, spider monkey dialect in which we had this first flavor of comprehensions, x times 2 for x of y. Uh, and then in ES6, we have this new flavor of generator comprehensions for x of whatever, x times 2. And I implemented this in Firefox, and it shipped. And they removed it from the standard. I mean, it's really offensive. But the new thing. The new thing is uh, you, you have, you, you sort of chain pipelines. And it, it has a real big advantage, though, and I've I got to give them this, that you can polyfill it, right? Because you can't polyfill syntax, but you can polyfill this sort of pipeline chain of, of iterators. And so the result of this 0, 1, 2, keys, map, and it's an arrow function there, is an iterator. And as you ask for the next value, it will compute the next value. So all right, nice. Let, let's, let's give that a try. Here we go again. Emacs. I'm like an old schooler. Because, you know, I kind of am, actually. So uh, if I go into Mozilla Central, which you uh, check out by Git, then I go into uh, JS Source, this is SpiderMonkey. 
right? So I actually, I advise all of you all to check out your implementations. They're kind of interesting. And again, uh, as in uh, JavaScript core, it's called built-in, which is the directory containing uh, the JavaScript files that you're interested in. And I'm going to go into iterator.js. And this is uh, giving me parts of the implementations of iterator. So what I want to do is I want to add a method map on an iterator. And what I really want to write is something really awesome like this. I want to write function star, because that's a generator, and iterator map. Uh, f, and uh, here I want to say for var x of this yield yield uh, f of x, right? And uh, so this is these are shipping uh, generators are shipping in Firefox. They're going to ship in Chrome, I think, within a, a week or two when the beta becomes stable. Um, I made those word up. And, and it, I mean, it's really lovely, right? Like 4x of this, because this is the iterator being chained on. Uh, you know, yield your map thing. It's beautiful, and it doesn't work. <laughs> the reason it doesn't work is because weird JavaScript. Uh, generator functions and generator uh, objects, the, the instantiations of iterators, have this weird, nasty prototype thing that itself is being set up while this weird JS is running. And so. If you compile this, it compiles fine. You run your JavaScript, and it errors with something obtuse about object create not being available. So in a, in a sense, it's a lesson uh, that when you write weird JavaScript, you don't get good errors, because the error system isn't present at that point, sadly. So unfortunately, we have to write something that it's a bit uh, more nasty. So we say function iterator map, and we're going to sort of hack it on our own. Uh, the, yeah, we have f. So uh, the first thing is to get the iterator from the iterable. There, iter equals uh, this. Uh, and then we have to call the at at iterator, the symbol dot iterator. So this is a, a symbol in ES6, a magical symbol specified that um, the pr is a property on anything that is iterable. And if you call it with no arguments, you get an iterator. And the point of this being that you can uh, iterate over uh, an array, for example, and then you call this magical property on it, and you get an iterator. And you can, you can make that magical property on your objects. And, and I advise you to search in the tubes for it if you're interested. So standard uh, iterator, uh, I call it on this. And I don't have um, generator functions, sadly, but I do have ES6 object literals. So I can uh, return. So next, I, I can just make a function here directly. That's uh, the, the sort of format of uh, a function property on an object literal in ES6. And I think this is shipping in Firefox already. Uh, return next there. So what do I have to do? Uh, when next is called, next, uh, sorry, val. When next is called with a value uh, on this iterator, I am going to have to first get the result. Uh, from the iterator that I'm val. val. Yeah, indeed. Thank you. This, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then I'm going to return uh, the, uh, oh. yeah. So if, uh, if the result is done, so result dot done, then I return result. Otherwise, I return. Uh, Value uh, being uh, f of result dot value done false. Okay, and I think with that semicolon where post where ah post false indeed. OK. So we've returned that. We returned our iterator. OK, and I think, yeah, indeed. Thank you very much. I expected to be able to see what I was typing, but you know. If this doesn't work, I have a git stash, so I can just apply that there. OK, so this is good. This is good, but it's not going to work, unfortunately. <laughs> 
And the reason is, this is an iterator because it has a next method, but it's not an iterable because it doesn't have an iterator method. So we have to say, we have to give it an iterator method, uh, which is function return this. Right, so this iterator is an iterable, it has an iterator method. This, this weird bracket syntax is a computed property. So it's, it's the answer when you need to compute what the key is instead of having a, a literal there. It's a new ES6 thing. Um, and I, I, I think that's probably gonna work. Actually, I don't feel like you know, looking over my shoulder, so I'm actually just gonna you know, reset this whole thing and apply whatever I had before, how I roll. Um, HG revert, because you have to learn apparently subversion and git and mercurial to contribute to these things, it's the worst. HG revert all. And then I'll HG Q push. My previous change. All right, HG diff. You can see that, uh, well, log dash P. It's actually a commit. Clown shoes, really, circus here. You can see here that, you know, I have the same thing. And that in addition, uh, in, oh, here we go. In, uh, in Spider Monkey, the way this works is that each kind of prototype has this C array associated with it. And it, and it links to the name of the self-hosted function and that binds that to a name of a property. What I recommend to y'all is y'all use grep, just like monkeys, you know, and, and, and like search for, you know, something else that's in that same area. Uh, and just do the same thing. Like, that's, that's exactly what I do, like, and I'm professional, so I'm, I'm letting y'all know. <laughs> so, uh, what we can do now is see the UJS source, release, make, J4, and, and eventually we'll, ha we'll have a thing. Okay. S yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's, let's see if it works, actually. All right, so we have a JS here. So for var x of uh, 0, 1, 2, let's call the keys method on it to iterate over the keys, uh, dot map, um, x, x times 2. I really hope this works, you know. And then I close my print. I'll print x. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So. Uh, Yes, next, people. Yes, next. <laughs> right. Right on. Okay. That's, a, that's actually exactly what we have here. Um, and it, yeah, right? It's like when your probably fill ends up on the thing, it's like golly, right? <laughs> and, and I looked for this on the internet and I didn't find any, you know, so I just want to put this word out there and just kind of back away. <laughs> Thing is, our implementation is pretty bad at this point, though, because you got all these questions that you have to answer, you know, to yourself, like when you're when you're actually working on on spec features, like what is the prototype chain of, of the thing that I'm returning, and actually, it turns out I can't map over this iterator that I returned from map because it has no map property because its prototype isn't worked out right. So I mean. This exercise in polyfilling is, is actually a great feedback mechanism for the spec, because all we have right now is this general idea of pipelines, and there's nothing else, right? Nothing else. So I, feedback from, from actual JavaScripters, which is an odd thing, because there aren't many actual JavaScripters you know, working, implementing the features, or you know, on the standards committees even. You know, feedback from actual JavaScripters is really useful. So. Uh, right, let's talk about V8. So V8 is what I want to mostly work on these days. And uh, now, I'm an American, and I, well, I didn't grow up Protestant, I did grow up Catholic, and you know, we, we're used to lots of um, participatory religious services. So when I raise my hands like this, I would like for a little bit of help from y'all to, to read out the next thing that comes on the slide. So, uh, all right, so for, first one thing. There's a deep analogy between languages and operating systems. When you, when you make a language implementation, you make a facility for running user code, right? And, and so what does it mean for, for V8 to boot? Like what does it mean for, 
when you, when you spawn a new tab, what actually happens? And here, in the beginning, <laughs> there was the empty function. I, I have to try this out, because it's, it's going to be awesome, right? In the beginning, there was the empty function. This is wonderful. No, great. <laughs> so what happens is, is when, when VA boots, we, we start to tie things together with you know, knives and glue and spit and twine and stuff and C++. We start with the empty function. And then we start to add things. Oh, right. And Goog looked on it and saw that it was good. No. So we start to add all the things, you know, like we, we add the strict mode functions that to use as templates for making other strict mode functions. We add the first global object. We start to put objects on it that are empty but simply bound to the names, you know, array and object, and it just goes on and on and on. And you know, you can imagine some future edition of uh, marching them all onto the ark or something. And Goog looked on it and saw that it was good. But for fuck's sake, it's in. And so here's where the, the JavaScript comes in, because like, you're writing a lot of C++ and it's not nice, right? So we want to start to implement things in, in JavaScript. Um, and we need to do so in a way that um, you know, we can build a program, but we, we don't have to, uh, we don't want to expose all of our um, all of, all of our temporaries, all of our you know, in-progress objects that are being constructed to the world. So we make a global object called the built-ins and a global object called the global. And the built-ins has access to the global, but the global does not have access to the built-ins. And we do our work in the built-ins, and we mutate the global as we go, is, is basically the idea. Um, and um, somewhat confusingly, um, in, in V8, you'll see the word natives applied to functions in JavaScript. And that, I, I like that as a programmer person. You know, you have natives and foreign function interfaces, and the foreign is the C++, and the native is the good, and um, it almost makes you want to be a, like a UKIPper or something. <laughs> not, not really. Um, yeah, so JavaScript, let's, let, let's, uh, let's do a thing. So in, in V8, I'll switch over here as well. V8, uh, it takes less time to check out, which is kind of nice. And if I go in generator.js, I can say uh, function star generator object map uh, f. And I can do exactly the thing I wanted to do before. I can say for var x of this uh, yield f of x, something like that. No, I don't want to write the copyright. Can I get that right? OK. So that's a generator object map. Uh, and if I look down, like we have more things. Like This is actually the function which implements next on a generator object. And I, I want to point it out uh, b just to indicate that um, this is weird JavaScript V8 edition. There are things like um, the capital letter things are usually macros. There's macro expansion going on here like with a custom Python program. And there's, yeah, right. And, and there's uh, the percent signs uh, prefixing some of these things. And y'all probably seen this before. If you've ever maybe had somebody in Node ask you to run something with allow native syntax, don't do that. Because it's so dangerous. Like, like this generator next thing like reconstructs a stack frame and, I don't know, an instruction pointer and jumps into the middle. Like this is, you know, knife throwing, right? And so um, these. These primitives, these percent things, can be used to compose sub secure abstractions, uh, but they are not themselves you know, secure abstractions. So uh, that's a bad thing. So anyway, uh, generator object next. I get off my pulpit here. Not yet. Generator object next. If I search the next time I see it, it says never optimize it, and then install it on the generator object prototype. And I'm just going to add, uh, whoops. I'm going to add map down here. So now, uh, and, and really, as we say, this should be on some common prototype inherited by all of these iterator objects. It's in the spec. It's in no implementation yet. It's a bit more work to wire up something like that. So, but anyway, here's where we are. Uh, nicely, we don't have to edit any C++ at all, but we do have to uh, 
build using like a fourth build system here because there's like JIP and Ninja and Make and CMake. Uh, yeah, I think that's Autoconf also. It's good times. Make x64.release j4. We start to compile things. And actually, this one doesn't take too long, I don't think. Awesome. Linking out x64.release d8 for var x of 1, 2, 3. Oops. Dot keys dot map. We don't have arrow functions by default yet. Boo. All right, how am I doing? Parenthesis. Parenthesis. Print x. Map is not a function. Did I even save my file? Ah, you know what happened? I did this before too. So this keys object, what? I quit it. This keys object, um, uh, I'm calling keys on an array iterator, and it's exactly the same thing I said before, that I didn't install it on um, the common iterator prototype, and I just installed it on generators. So this would work on a generator iterator, but not an array's iterator, so sadness. But time is moving on, so I, I, we can just assume that it did the same thing as in SpiderMonkey, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Y'all are really an easy crowd. So, as I mentioned, we've got weird verbs and weird JS V8 edition with the percent signs and the magical things and the macros and stuff. We also have weird nouns. It's really, um, as, as you know, users are attackers, right? They're trying to mess up your programs all the time. And so, as an implementer, uh, I'm trying to implement the specification, but the user is like, I'm going to put it in a proxy. I'm going to put in a getter on this thing. And, and so where the specification says add things to an array, uh, maybe you want to ensure that your push operation is actually array push and the user hasn't you know, messed with the prototype. So that's the general concern you have to have here, like internal array so that we can use push on arrays. Weird. If, I, I do suggest you do this stuff, and I suggest you read these in, in this order, runtime JS, V8 natives JS, and array JS. Sort of builds on each other. It's nice reading. Right, so uh, finally, and, and getting close to wrapping up, uh, you'd think having like this big blob of JavaScript, and parsing it, and you know, making things and stuff, it's a bit expensive, right? And, and it is. Uh, but it doesn't happen but during the build time. What happens is, at build time, we run through this whole bootstrapping process. And then, you know, we march the objects and the arrays and stuff onto the arc, so to speak, uh, and serialize the heap. So traverse all the objects that exist and write them out to a file. And every time you open a new tab, we just read in that file and recreate the heap, recreate the world after the flood, so to speak. This is a really great metaphor. I'm, I'm rocking it, guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's what, ha what happens. So it's not so expensive, actually, to do uh, computation at bootstrap time, because uh, what happens is, you know, we just cut out the heap uh, every time you open a tab. And this is necessary in the context of V8 because of Chrome's multiprocess model. In SpiderMonkey, for example, you can do more initialization and share state at every tab, uh, because at least for a long time, uh, they haven't uh, shared any uh, state. Uh, th they've always shared state between tabs. Now, even with multiple processes, it's not necessarily, you know, one per tab. Uh, but with V8 having, you know, processes all the time, we need a fast way to, to start up. So that's the, the snapshot process is basically what that is. And uh, I would note that the DOM, unfortunately, is something else because it exists in a very weird relationship to frames and, and globals and the same DOM object can present different faces. So uh, y'all know more about this than me. You know, really, I'm kind of ignorant on that side. But what I do know is it's different. Uh, there is an effort to do DOM features in JavaScript in Blink in, in Chrome. Uh, it's called Blink in JS, but it's got some different considerations. And if you're interested, I would uh, suggest uh, Googling for this document, uh, Hardening Security of Content Scripts by Kintaro Haro. And uh, if you do go to contribute this stuff, read the spec very carefully, very, very carefully. Translate it step by step. And I know there's like 
25 steps in all of these like array.map implementations. Uh, step by step, don't even try to be clever, don't even try to optimize anything, just like do what it says, because uh, correctness first and then optimize later, if ever, is basically the thing. And JavaScript engines are, are very good at you know, handling, handling things in general. Uh, write tests, of course, if you can get common tests across browsers, it's, you know, it's leveling up, so to speak, uh, and, and then submit it to the patch tracker. And if you're interested in the process and you know, want to know more, come pull me afterwards and, and we can talk about it. So uh, yeah, turn those probably fills into golly fills, guys, guys and ladies. So thanks and have a good luck. <laughs>